been having this vision. After a big opening day, it's time for happy hour in the form of the Corona Post Show. That's right, the Corona Open Mexico presented by Quicksilver is done and dusted for day one. But wow, what a big day it was. Chris Cote here joined by Cali Carranza and Kaipo Guerrero. Uh, we started off on the beach here in Barra in the dark, not fully aware of what was about to happen. When the sun came over the hill, we saw tons of action, upsets, big, thrilling victories, everything in between. It was a full day with something for every type of surf fan. Oh, absolutely. And it is the first time in two decades that we see the world's best come to Barra de la Cruz, and that's really exciting. I like that we kicked it off the very first day, got the show rolling. Um, we're going to get to the forecast a little bit later. But things are looking good, Chris. Yeah, it feels good to put a day like that in the books. And I loved how we started today. You know, usually you can kind of, uh, you know, take your pace and just cruise into these early heats. No way. The first heat was an absolute hammer. Kelly Slater, Kolohe Andino, and Kanoa Igarashi. Kelly Slater started us off with a double tube ride. This was just a sign of things to come today, Barra. I, I can't believe that this man waited two decades to come back. And look at the surfing he's been doing right where he left off. Kolohe, not bad at all. What about this guy? I like to see Chloe Andino back in winning form, looking healthy, looking motivated. The surfing is on point. Kolohe Andino, he's going to be one to watch throughout this entire competition with surfing just like that. Surfing so good that you almost forgot that he's been gone for so long, recovering from those injuries, coming back in fighting shape. And this truly was, I would say, I mean, on paper, you know it was going to be one of the heats of the day, but it lived up to all the expectations. What a way to fire us off. Well, someone had to get third, right, Chris? And unfortunately, that was Kanoe Garashi. Nothing taken away from his performance or his form right now. I still think he's going to be one of the top guys moving through this competition and moving through the elimination round. What a way to start there. And Dino with the win. Slater in second. Igarashi in third. Relegated to that scary second elimination round so we always expect Kolohe and Dino, Kelly Slater, Kanoa to put on big performances along with Gabriel and Italo those names tend to overshadow sometimes the middle portion of the championship tour but that's where we saw some huge performances coming from here's one of them Leonardo Fioravanti coming off his appearance in the Olympics came out swinging and uh, he put down one of the performances of the day, surfing like this. It's like he never injured himself, like he never went away. He is right here and now. Yeah, and I think it's really important to consider that he came off of an event in El Salvador, managed to get his foot in the door in Tokyo, and this type of surfing we really haven't seen from Leo in a while. On point, sharp surfing, looking right back in form, looking super fit. The angles of his turn, his body mechanics, Leonardo Fervanti, he's uh, taking a lap on the track here at Bara. Yeah, he, uh, he hasn't missed a step. No ankle brace needed there. He is right back in fighting shape. And uh, when he is at his the top of his game, he is an absolute top five threat. He'll have to do some work to get himself into that conversation in 2022, of course, coming through with the injuries and everything that he went through in 2021. No doubt setting himself up for a big showing in 2022. And how about the performance of young Ethan Ewing? This guy came onto the championship tour with a lot of expectations, had a rocky start, but this is the Ethan Ewing we expect to see every event. Oh, yeah. We're approaching this like this is a surprise or something. This is no surprise. No surprise. We knew that Ethan Ewing was going to bring game over here. We like that rail game, razor sharp, and just beautiful stylish surfing from Ethan Ewing. Yeah, something about Ethan is that he's working now with Mike Parsons, so Mike's saying, well, all he needs is just something to click, and when that does, he's going to be a top three threat all year long. So two of the quote-unquote surprises of the day, Leonardo Fioravanti and Ethan Ewing. No surprise if you're fans of their surfing to see them performing that well. 
One uh, one surprise that kind of popped up, and it wasn't the surfers doing the surprising. It was the ocean. Right when the women's round started, we saw a totally different look here at Barra de la Cruz. Things glassed off, the waves jumped up in size, and the opening rounds, the opening heats of the women's division went off. Huge scores all around, giant performances. Love to see the ocean turn on just in time for Malia Manuel to go out there and do exactly what Malia Manuel does best. Silky, smooth, stylish surfing and adding a lot of power to her game. And look at the wave, okay? We came from a man-made miracle wave in stop number six. We're in stop number seven and we're in another miracle wave here, but this is 100% natural and Malia Manuel just fit it so perfectly with this beautiful surfing that she performed with. Yeah, I feel like a lot of surfers, they actually have to rely on instinct now when they surf Farah. Obviously, the wave at the surf ranch, you can really you can know what's going to happen in the wave, but here you really have to read, go on instinct, and apply that surfer feel to the wave at Barra. Cream get the money. Carissa rules everything around me. The Carissa Moore show was in full effect today, dropping one of the highest heat totals of the entire event so far. And, you know, just doing Carissa Moore things. That's, there's not much more you can say. This is what she does. This is what she does. She's already clink, clinched a position in that final five. She's got a gold medal to her. She's making history. Carissa Moore, this is her year. I got to say it. And I'm, you know what I'm doing, Chris? I'm just stating the obvious, aren't I? Right. You think she's going to win a world title? Yeah. Raise your hand if you think Carissa Moore is going to. Yeah. Okay, thank you, so. Kelly. <laughs> all right. Well, since we're all in agreement here, uh, she does have some work to do. There's a lot of surfing yet to come. And we have some more work to do. So we're going to take a quick break and come right back to you with more action from the Corona Post Show. Stay tuned. Top five moments coming up next. Welcome back to the Corona Post Show. And now it's time to get you fired up because this is the official surf line forecast. Kalei Carranza, I know you've decoded these maps before. What are we looking at for the rest of the event? Well, this is what happens in all of Mexico during the summer months. Big storms get created down in New Zealand. They work their way towards Chile. And with that, they create a diagonal pattern kind of upwards to the right, pushing all these swells towards this area of Mexico. You can see there the size, the period, looking really good, guys. Oh, it's a tasty forecast, isn't it? We're just warming up today, and it looks like we're going to get more just served throughout the next four days. I, I like that. I like the momentum of potentially going back to back to back to back and having the continuity of the competition. I heard the subtleties there. You've got happy hour on your mind, and that's a good thing because we are celebrating surfing, and what a day to do that. 
and potentially tomorrow as we just saw there on the surfline forecast we never know officially until the call is made by the real officials we are all very unofficial on the call uh we'll know first thing in the morning of course surfline forecast is looking good uh the competitors we have in the draw if we go into round two tomorrow i mean that right there that's like a finals round the names that we have in the second round elimination rounds are massive and uh we're going to start off with a couple big elimination heats and here's one of them kanoa igarashi peterson crisanto and diego cadena i'm going to throw it out there who's going to take this one kelly Diego is going to show the world what he's got. I think this is what he's been waiting for for 15 years, and he wasn't happy at all with his performance today. He couldn't find the waves. Tomorrow, I think, is going to be a different story. I love, I love the, um, the, the, the great story of Diego. You know, 15 years ago, coming second in the trials this year, and just coming one place from becoming into the main event in, tw in 2006. This year, winning the trials. He's got his place on the big stage. I think he's going to come through that heat as well. But Kanoe Garashi, come on now. Like, he, a lot of things would have to go wrong for Kanoe not to make that heat. Yeah, silver medal, confidence, just everything going his way. That's going to be a big one, a big way to potentially start. But don't talk too soon because the women's field is equally as deadly threatening. And just check out one of the elimination rounds. This is heat one. Isabella Nichols, Macy Kellanen, and Regina Pioli. And uh, this one right here is close. I mean, this is a really even matchup. I would say, statistically speaking, Isabella Nichols potentially with the edge, but we don't know exactly what the wave's going to be like. I mean, it could be all in Regina's court if the waves are what she's used to out here. Yeah, I feel like Isabella and Macy really learned a lot from their round one heats. I think they made some crucial mistakes as far as like wave selection goes. I think they're going to come back tomorrow and not make the same mistakes. Well, he too is looking uh, equally threatening. Keely Andrew, Sage Erickson, Shelby Detmers, three surfers right here who surfed well in their opening round seat. They were just going up against really good surfers that just had the slight edge. Every surfer has their day. Uh, but in this one, I mean, ooh, this one, I would say even tougher to pick. Well, uh, well I'm going to make a pick. Okay. Make a pick, please. I'm going to say uh, Sage Erickson takes out that heat because... I might as well make a pick, and I think I have a 33% chance of being correct. Okay, well, just just between us, I'll go Keeley, you go Shelby. Um, I am. Or we can to switch. Go. I mean, whatever, whatever you guys want to do. You know, I really like the way Keeley was surfing. Okay. I think uh, I think she's gonna take that heat out. I'll take Shelby. I think she's gonna fire it up tomorrow and do it for the uh, the local nation. So with all of that, there were so many moments today we can look back and reflect on, but. We, we do have, uh, you know, plans after this to uh, get involved potentially with this beautiful plane break. So we're going to wrap things up with your top five moments from day one at the Corona Open Mexico presented by Quicksilver. And guess what? The GOAT doing GOAT things. And no one else got barreled today. And Kelly Slater got barreled twice on one wave. That's yeah. number five. He's back. The GOAT, like he ever went anywhere. But you know what? He flew in last night. Just showed up kind of at dinner last night and uh, came out swinging. Hello, Andino went to town as well. I mean, this first heat was a banger. It was incredible to see these guys right away start things off. Day one, first heat of the day, and we saw impressive scores and impressive surfing. I spilled coffee all over myself right when this thing started. <laughs> I go, what? We're just going to kick it off like this? All right, here we go. Kanoe Garashi. Everybody was within striking distance in the last couple of minutes of this heat. And uh, it was truly one of those heats where even though, you know, you look at kind of past results and, of course, goatness, it was a very even matchup throughout. So Kano Egarashi relegated to round two. But now let's talk Jeremy Flores. J-Flo with the big announcement just yesterday, not calling it a retirement, just calling it a different direction. And right there went upside down, showing us he still got the tricks that he basically invented as a kid. That was incredible. How's that? Nose pick reverse, whatever. Club sandwich, Jeremy Flores. Very cool. Malia Manuel came out swinging. And you could tell in her post-heat interview, I mean, she was not resting on her laurels. She means deadly business in this event. Yeah, the Hawaiian ladies really found uh, their form here in Barra de la Cruz. It really reminds me of Hawaii as far as power goes, but it just gives you that softer lip line to go a little bit harder. And I love that she had the AI Forever jersey on in this heat. She was feeling the mana 
the spirit out there, and that was su such a beautiful tribute by Malia Manuel. Well, our number two moment. Well, these guys had the right stuff. They did everything right. The They're right le brothers. Learning to fly. Yes, that's right. Uh, that's right. <laughs> Owen <laughs> and Mikey Wright going head to head. And uh, Mikey Wright, another big announcement made today. Uh, he is quote unquote retiring, but that just means he's going to go film some incredible surfing videos. And we do get to see more of Mikey in this event. But uh, consider how nice and humble he is and how he takes everyone into consideration. He said he didn't want to do it at this event once he found out that Jeremy was quitting. He was like, oh, I don't want to, you know, ruin Jeremy's thunder, but he had to do it. He's deciding to go free surf, and I think it's going to be exciting to see what kind of video parts he pulls out next year. I think it's a, it's a different type of retirement. You know, I think uh, for Jeremy Flores, he's done everything that he could do in the competitive landscape. Uh, with a Pipe Masters win and all the accolades behind him. But more to come from both those surfers. But right now, I mean, let's talk about the performance that we're seeing from some of these women. This was truly, I would say, uh, the women just took over. And uh, they have been the standouts throughout. And if you see the surfers compete, the women, after day one, would you change your power surfer? Well, you still got a chance. We still got a chance to switch up your team. You know, if you're playing Fantasy Surfer, you have until the beginning of the, uh, after the elimination round. So there's still a chance to switch up your lineups, um, take a look at the brackets. I'm not gonna give you too many hints um, because I like playing Fantasy Surfer too, but the women just absolutely ripped and Bara provided for the women's opening round too. It really pulsed during that whole round. Yeah, Very humble the... guy, Kaipo. I wanna give you credit for being <laughs> top 10 in the world <laughs> Fantasy Surfing. I didn't know you had it in you. I just, I'm, 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 it's an honor to be sitting next to you. Uh, thanks, Chris. Top 10 on the planet. <laughs> uh, but the women's top 10 really did the work here. Sally Fitz, beautiful front three. And that's how you want to end it right there with some highlights. Our top five always comes through for us. So uh, with that, we're going to leave you with some highlights. On behalf of myself, Kale, and Kaipo, we'll be back here bright and early. Well, it won't be bright. We'll be back here in the dark. But we'll be ready for you. <laughs> Check back in tomorrow morning. Go to WorldSurfLeague.com for all event updates. We will see you tomorrow. Buenas noches. Buenos dias. Welcome, everybody, to this beautiful part of the world, Oaxaca, Mexico, here at Barra de la Cruz. The waves look so incredibly fun. Every time you see one of the best surfers in the world come in, they're smiling from ear to ear. <laughs> Kelly, looking to get a quick start here. It's nice to be here, for sure. The water's too warm. Frontside wrap complete for Antino. There's the reverse in transition. Canoe up and riding. He has momentum, Joe. Coming off that silver medal at the Olympics. There's the wrapping cut back. Hola Pinto into a fin throw reverse. As we see Felipe. Nothing beats Mexico with tacos and, you know, warm weather. That right there is a signature Jeremy Flores maneuver. Back to the air aye, aye, for aye. Mateus Hardy. It's so fun out there, guys. Seriously, just so fun. Italo Ferreira, backside punt, lays back and recovers. <laughs> Jack Robinson. Mikey Wright seems to be gaining some momentum. Leonardo Fioravanti on the inside. I love that hack. Viva Mexico! Ethan Ewing oh. did not disappoint. Look at the control that he has. Now the women are in the water. Going above the lip, air reverse for Fitzgibbons. This copyrighted event broadcast is produced by the World Surf League for broadcast around the world and may not be retransmitted, reproduced, rebroadcast, or otherwise distributed or used in any form without the written consent of the World Surf League.